Hi everybody, today I'm going to be giving you my impressions of the Rock Manual Espresso Machine and how to get the best possible espresso out of this remarkable device. Full disclosure, I was given this machine for free by Rock, but this is not a paid promotional video and it will be my honest, genuine impressions of the machine after having used it for about a month or so. For a lot of people who have been in the world of espresso for a while, you're probably looking for something a little bit more expensive, a little bit higher level, and especially if you like milk-based drinks, this isn't the espresso machine for you. As you can see, there's no way for this thing to create steam. So if you're looking for something where you can create that textured milk to make lattes and latte art, this isn't gonna work for you. This machine is targeted at people who really love espresso and want to be able to make their own espresso at home instead of having to go to a shop to get it every time. The price point is also exactly the level that a lot of people would be comfortable paying for getting a good espresso. So the basic model comes in at about 150 pounds, so this is a really great entry level machine. Because it's summer right now, I've actually found myself using this instead of my normal machine, the Ranchilio Silvia, because it doesn't take any time to heat up, you just boil the kettle and you can use it straight away, and if you're making iced lattes or ice drinks, it's actually much faster. There are a few niggling issues with the machine that I found over the last month of using it almost every day, but for people who are just getting into espresso, this is a perfect way to learn the ins and outs of making a good espresso at home. So the Rock Machine comes with a few things. It comes with this small porta filter. Um, unfortunately, it's not bottomless. I would have liked to have a bottomless porta filter, especially for something like this, where it's gonna look really interesting coming out of the bottom, but it's got this little spout. Um, and it also comes with a dosing spoon that also doubles as a tamp. Unfortunately, the tamp is by far my least favorite part of the machine. It's a little bit difficult to get the right angle when you're tamping down. I would have liked to see a special tamp designed for the circumference of this particular porta filter, and I think it would have made the experience much more enjoyable for me. Let's get everything ready so we can make some espresso. You'll need a freshly boiled kettle and a spare cup. So put the spare cup under and put the hot water in the top and leave it there. This water in the top will help to heat up the brew chamber. You should also have freshly ground coffee from your grinder and the cup you're going to pour into and also the plastic spoon that also acts as a tamp. Okay, once the chamber is heated up, you can pull up the arms and it will automatically come down into the receptacle that you have. The water will automatically pour through, but you can push down to get rid of the excess water quickly. You should also have a tea towel so that you can dry off the port filter once you take it out. I found that overfilling the basket just a little bit gets you a better overall espresso shot. Make sure you lock the porta filter in tight so that it doesn't break any of the seals. I'm gonna start with pre-infusion for about seven seconds. Considering how inexpensive the machine is and that it has no electrical or plumbing issues that you can just use a hot kettle and make a good espresso is actually very, very impressive and I'm really impressed with the machine. So if you're in the market for an espresso machine that's nothing fancy but it does what it's supposed to do which is make a really nice espresso and that you can take on the road with you, this is a really good option for you. I hope you liked this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment below and tell us what you would like to know about home espresso and home roasting.